ear is responsible for us to hear different sounds. Do you know that after vision, hearing perceives most of our information? Not only in humans, but in most of the other animals also, sound helps them for communication, for finding foods, mates and shelter. Let's discuss about human ear. Human ear can be broadly classified into three parts. The external ear, the middle ear and the internal ear. Visible part of the ear is called external ear or the ear pinna. This is connected to a tunnel like passage called external auditory meters which is connected to the delicate membrane like structure called the eardrum or the tympanic membrane or tympanum. And next coming to middle ear, it has three tiny bones called malleus, incus and stapes. Malleus is hammer shaped. Incus is anvil shaped and stapes is stirrup shaped. The tympanum connects to malleus, malleus to incus and incus to stapes. The cavity of middle ear is connected to the cavities of the mouth by a tube called eustachian canal. This helps to maintain equal pressure on both the sides of tympanic membrane which is a must for proper hearing. Then the stapes is connected to the inner ear. In the inner ear we have two cavities, the outer bony labyrinth and the inner membranous labyrinth. The outer bony labyrinth is made up of bones, so it is called as the bony labyrinth and the inner cavity is surrounded by a membrane, so it is called membranous labyrinth. The cavity of outer bony labyrinth is filled with a fluid called perilymph, whereas the inner membranous labyrinth is filled with a fluid called endolymph. The three different parts of the membranous labyrinth are vestibule, semicircular canals, and cochlea. Cochlea is the part which is involved in actual hearing. So let's see the structure of this cochlea. Cochlea is a spiral structure and is divided all along its length into two chambers, upper chamber and lower chamber by a basilar membrane. Both the chambers are filled with endolymph. The mouth of the upper chamber is called oval window as it is oval shaped and it is closed by the foot of stapes. The mouth of lower chamber is called round window as it is round shaped and it is closed by a membrane. The receptor cells which sense sound are located on the basilar membrane and a hair like cilium projects from each receptor cell to the endolymph of the upper chamber. These receptor cells at the base are connected to the nerve fibers. The external ear concentrates the sound waves through external auditory meters to the tympanum. The tympanum vibrates and then transmits these waves to malleus, then to incus and then to the stapes. And from stapes, these vibrations or waves are made to fall onto endolymph of the inner ear. These vibrations move the cilia in the endolymph and movement of cilia generates an electrical impulse in the ciliated cell. This electric impulse is sent to the brain through an auditory nerve and the cilia in the endolymph responds to different wavelengths of the sound. But some sounds, especially loud noises, can enter the inner ear through the bones of the skull instead of through the pinna. As we are conducting them through the bones, this is called as bony conduction. But sounds heard by this way are not very clear. Till now, you heard about 
how ear performs the function of hearing but there is one other function of ear called maintenance of equilibrium of the body the other two parts of inner membranous labyrinth that is the vestibule and semicircular canals are responsible for this the semicircular canals which are 3 in number are present at right angles to each other two of them are vertical and one is horizontal the semicircular canals are also filled with endolymph and also have fine tufts of hair like cilia whenever there is a change in the position of the head the fluid in the semicircular canals moves that is it swirls and this disturbs the position of the cilia and this generates an electrical impulse which is communicated to the brain through the auditory nerve auditory nerve from each ear divides into two halves one half supplies the information about the sound and body posture and the movement to the same side of the brain while the other half supplies the information to the opposite side of the brain there is a specific area in the brain to analyze the signals received from the auditory nerve mechanism coming to the mechanism as soon as the pinna catches the sound it makes to fall on the tympanum through the external auditory meters then the tympanum vibrates and through chain of bones that is malleus incus and stapes the endolymph vibrates these vibrations in the endolymph move the cilia and the sound is sensed and this movement in cilia generates an electrical impulse in the ciliated muscles which is sent to the brain through the auditory nerve capacity of our hearing is limited we can hear sounds in a frequency range of 16 to 40000 hertz capacity to hear sounds at lower frequency remains constant throughout the life while capacity to hear sounds of higher frequency decreases in old age defects in hearing may be corrected by using hearing devices